You're still watching Ways. Now, National Energy Conservation Day is observed on December 14th every year. It focuses on creating awareness in people regarding the importance of energy conservation and ways to achieve it in order to deal with the crisis of climate change and global warming. I think this holiday is actually specific to India, but I thought it was necessary for us to mention it because... Um, Global warming is not uh, is not unique to a region. It's, I mean, see what's happening this year, especially with the rains, right? Absolutely. December heavy rain is pouring like as if you know it's mm -hmm. the the rainy season when, when we're supposed to be in hammer time. So the weather, the climate is actually changing, mm -hmm. you know. And I just hope we're able to you know learn how and, to conserve energy. And another thing about this is that um, you know in Nigeria we have a very poor um, culture, but thanks to should I say thanks. They've increased the electricity Tari, bill, so everybody so now is everybody's <laughs> very conscious about yeah. what they actually spend on. Mm. Of course, apart from those that know how to cut corners. Mm. So I, I actually, I don't know about you, Jennifer, but I actually, because I had used, um, uh, gosh, for how long now we've been on solar and inverters Panel, for a yeah, very long time. So, so, yeah. so mm -hmm. I already am used to that culture of mm -hmm. powering down all my, you know, um, what's it called, yeah, appliance and everything at mm -hmm. home and all of that. And there was one time, 2012. I traveled, I, I was abroad, mm -hmm. and the entire, my entire bedroom caught fire. Was it oh. Yes, oh it was a power surge. The air conditioner was left on. So oh, they, yeah. brought, they brought the light and there was a power surge. And, you know, so after that, that is we a, got a centralized a stabilizer mm -hmm. for the house. Then we also installed. So I think, so for me, I've always had that culture, you know, to conserve. Yeah, and all of that. And I think it will help, a it will go a long way. With the new tariffs, like you rightly said. Oh, it's <laughs> everyone, everyone is actually being very cautious. Yes, calls us to Everyone is thinking of your electricity yes. bill. So, Jennifer, what did you find for us in the news? Mm -hmm. Okay, so today in This Day Live, Kenneth Eze wins Arise Fashion Week's $100,000 star price. Mm. So if you don't know Arise Fashion Week, um, it is um, a fashion event where fashion designers get to showcase their work and it came down to eight finalists and Kenneth emerged as the winner. So I think basically all they're trying to do is to let um, the upcoming um, fashion designers know that there's a platform where you can actually showcase your work. So if you have um, if you have a talent for fashion and it's something that you've been into for a while and you want the world to actually see what you've been doing that's a very good platform yeah. but i think there was um there was a controversy about him emerging as the winner okay really? yeah yeah it? so well, a lot of people were saying he shouldn't have been the winner because um he has been in the business for a while now and they mm. needed to have given um fresh new person. yes new designers um an opportunity to actually showcase themselves mm. So they also, like, there were actually lots, people were saying a lot of things. Um, fashion designers were not too happy about it. Mm. Well, you know, it's politics, it it's it the is. business. Yeah, so I think, again, honestly speaking, like, see, honestly, when I see some of these reality TV things that they do and all of that, most times, I always say that brands in Nigeria are very lazy. I don't know why I say that. They are very comfortable to pick someone that is scalable. Mm -hmm. You know, how about, you know, the way you watch, um, um, what's it called, a nobody just arrive, uh, uh, come I on the scene and that. become it, someone that, that, when you are abroad. No, they, mm -hmm. they used to do that. But now, a lot of brands, honestly, they look for mm -hmm. a marketable person. Mm -hmm. So if this person, you know, would bring the numbers to us and is this, is this oh, person absolutely. scalable, those are the kind of things they consider. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't blame them if they are picking. Of course, they've also invested heavily in the, into the, into the, program. the, pro the, the project, you know. Mm -hmm. So... I but mean, the truth is, in as much as I understand that, mm -hmm. you're, that you're doing it for business, you need to understand that you also need to push your people forward. Mm -hmm. Because Definitely. if we don't take our own people serious, people outside, outside of Nigeria would never take us serious. Mm -hmm. Because if you're playing politics in everything, you're blaming the government for, for being corrupt. But meanwhile, in your own little circle, you're doing the same thing. It's not about politics. It is about business. It's business. So. It is politics. <laughs> I think it's business. It's it is not politics. politics. It's business. I think, so, I think it's business. Though. For me, though. Yeah. Um, so what's your story? News, my yeah. story is about um, the kangaroo. We all know that. Um, no. This, let me t take a breather before I start this. Because it's so annoying what, has, what happened during the, over the weekend. And we had boys who were in school who were actually kidnapped in Kankara village. And we had our president who was there in Katsina State when this thing happened. Now Buhari is under fire for failing to see the parents of these individuals that, or these children that were actually kidnapped. 
This is by Aisha Yusufu and um, Shil Sani. They are the ones that are upset or actually You're castigating, out, yeah. yes, castigating the uh, president for not doing what he was supposed to do. I think they are so right in this context because um, the president is in Daura and the place where it happened is just a few minutes drive. What stops him from actually going down there? But also, we also have conflicting numbers in the figures of those who have been Adopt actually adopted. adopted yeah. Yeah. There was a story by, um, um, what's it called, um, Garuba, who said that, uh, the president's aide, who said that we had about 10 people already missing, the children that were missing. Then we also have Masari, the, gov the governor, who says that we have about 33 individuals that we're missing. Yeah. We also have an eyewitness who said that because he was there when this thing happened, when they were abducted, they, they were about 520. My key question here is this. When, they were, when we have about 20 people gathered together, and they are walking. We ask, what's happening? In this village or this area, this thing happened. We had about 500 or 300 people walking away with children, these children together in this particular place, and nobody asked nobody a questioned. question. Well, nobody asked a question. And this calls to mind that the individuals or the, the villagers or the people around that vicinity should be questioned. Hmm. They should know something Jennifer, about it. Jennifer, you wanted it. to take this story as well, Abby. Yes. Mm. Um, you know, initially when the news um, broke out, they started mm -hmm. with 600. Mm. I saw 600. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, it was later today, I saw it was reduced to 300 and something. Mm -hmm. and 333. I really don't know what's going on. I, I don't know the full story. Well, whatever it is, I think the government needs to get behind this. So and this, is not, find this is not new for us in this country. It happened in with the Chibok of, girls. Chibok girls, yeah. Okay, so... Interestingly, on Sunday, my husband and I were driving from Ota. We're coming back from, and, mm -hmm. you know, a, a friend of his called him up. She's a farmer. Okay. And she farms in the north. Mm -hmm. You know, she said that, you know, it has been hell what they go through. Right? There was a particular farmer that they kidnapped him, that he had to go and sell some kinds of properties to be able to raise three million naira to, you know, to, what's it called, pay as ransom. So this thing is beyond, and I think we've said this over and over again, if something like this lingers for too long, the hand of the government is in it. Is in it. So there's really nothing any, any government would tell me. And it when we should, we should stop. I, I think I like what they're doing, Aisha mm. Yusufu and um, the other person you and talked Shosani. about. And yeah, Shosani. Yes, calling out the president. But the truth mm. is, you've, we've called out the president several times. Has anything and nothing changed? Has nothing has no been silence done. is constant. So what are, what are we going to do about it? For me, yeah. I'm just trying to say, okay, what can we do? What is the creative solution that we can find, you know, towards insecurity in this country? And I think maybe we'll move on from there. I don't know. Sack all the northern governors. Now, so. <laughs> <laughs> like that will happen. <laughs> Talking about governors, they should Talk, be held talking accountable. Talking about Saki, let me take my Honestly, story. You know whether they, they want to shut up. Be you know what? You know, I was inside holy ground. I didn't. I didn't see. Yeah, I didn't want to know what was happening in the news. I didn't. I didn't care. Who do you want to hold accountable? Wait now, Jennifer. Let me give you my. To hold accountable needs to be held accountable. So, <laughs> so I was in. I was. I, I was in utter, like I said, and mm. so I didn't read the news. I didn't know what was going on. But I think I stumbled on one video of one person reading the news and said, oh, this somebody fainted in this one, this one fainted in 22. Oh, yeah, yeah. That one fainted. You know? So oh. I don't know what was happening. Why, why are they bringing why up they the fainting? Oh. Why are they bringing up the fainting Stand. saga again? Mm. So it, I think it's linked to, um, what's it called? This uh, story that I am taking that they mm. said, um, what's it called? Fresh um, fact exposed how Aquarium Madu and others withdrew 8 billion naira. Laundered funds in failed constitution amendment. You know, they said... Um, uh, fresh details has emerged on how members of the National Assembly Committee on Review of the 1999 um, Constitution withdrew 7.75 billion purportedly to armed, uh, to, sorry, to amend the Nigerian con Constitution. So I think everybody is just saying that I, I guess, you know, it will be his turn, you know, to faint when he's called upon to say that, you know. <laughs> but I like the fact that, yes, we're calling these people out. But, you know, I think we should be a lot more... Um, proactive. What's it called? No, not even proactive now. A, a lot more decisive when it comes to corruption cases going forward in this country. Because I think it has stayed for too long. Why don't we start to get definite punishment? Just the way Lagos State government brought out this LASMA rule now that if you go and take one way, mm. they impound your car and it is, you, it's for feature. You're not taking mm -hmm. it back. So if they put stringent rules like this concerning 
um, uh, what's it called, uh, corruption or um, fund embezzlement and all of that. Mm. Don't you think that we might really find a headway? If they say maybe if they catch you with whatever, you you be you be absolutely. hanged or something. Absolutely, <laughs> well, absolutely. You know? So the clause is if they catch you. No, they so will. So now that there's corruption, they will. We and, know. and you want to put in laws like that, people will find better ways to hide the corruption. Mm, no, well, trust we'll Nigerians. Find, don't worry. No, we won't find a better way. <laughs> but I think, uh, well, that's all we can take in the news. We don't really have so much time. We want to talk about success and how to define what success means to you. All right, so uh, we'll take a short break. When we return, we'll continue the conversation. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.